Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please whistle under your pen, followed by the comfortable patch. Thank you. There is one in this conference. Good morning. Good morning, Missy. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Lakia. Prayer call. Reignited prayer. I pray you all had a wonderful weekend, a relaxing weekend. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Yes. Good morning, Nina. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Pastor Shauna. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to those that are on the phone that called in. Good morning to you. Amen. Amen. We are going to get started. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. I thank and praise God for each and every one of you this morning who decided to wake up and say, I'm going to give God the first fruits of my day. Good morning, honey. Good morning, Darice. Good morning, Tara. I thank and praise God for each and every one of you who's on the call this morning. 
and we are going to jump right into the the word of the lord i tell you i've i've, I've been tossing and turning all night long um got up extra early this morning i the lord just woke me up extra early i was about to get out the bed about 3 a.m <laughs> and i said my husband would probably think i'm crazy getting out the bed that early <laughs> <laughs> but I am excited about what thus says the Lord this morning. So most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you for another day, Lord God. We thank you for seeing another Monday, God. We thank you for bringing us through our weekend, God, allowing us to have rest and relaxation, Lord God. Lord, as we as I bring forth the word, oh God, oh God, decrease me and increase you, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit speak through me, Lord God, and give a word to the people on the call on this morning, Lord God. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. We're in an expectation to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So this morning, we are going to talk about change in altitude, change in altitude. And um, some of you probably don't know, but I I have a little bit of fear in flying. <laughs> and I know we ain't supposed to have no fear and I know all that stuff, but this whole flesh right here has just a little bit of fear in flying. And so it, it, it's so bad that even one time my um my husband we, we had a trip planned last year to go to uh, I think we were supposed to go to Aruba <laughs> and I got scared so I canceled the whole trip <laughs> and so I just you know it's just something about getting on that plane and you know as I'm as I'm sitting there you know, I, I feel like I don't have any control. I don't have any control. And so, you know, at any point in time while you're on that plane, you the, the, the turbulence can come up or, you know, it could maybe dip a little bit or it starts, it shakes, shakes like that a little bit and it's unexpected, right? It's unexpected. Expected. And so, um, um, and it, there's several reasons why turbulence comes up. There's several reasons why turbulence comes up. And so I, I looked up the word turbulence and the definition, the, the, the regular Webster def, definition of turbulence is violent or unsteady movement of air or water, conflict, confusion, disturbance, turmoil. And so when we're up on that plane, that's exactly what we're feeling is turbulence. You know, there's a violent shake sometimes. And sometimes, I mean, we've been on air, airplanes where it shook almost the whole entire flight, two, three hours. And, and you know, the, the captain or the, I'm sorry, the pilot will come on and say, you know, everybody needs to return to their seats. And, and, and when I get really fearful or uh, afraid is when he says, tells the, the um, flight attendants to have your seat. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> I know we gonna go through something now. It's when we, when we have to tell the flight attendants to have a seat and sit down for a little while. And so the scripture um, for today, um, one of them is coming from Matthew 8, 23 through 27. And we know that um, in these scriptures, and I'm paraphrasing, you guys can go back and read it for yourself. It talks about when Jesus and the disciples got onto the boat. And back then, of course, there wasn't any planes, right? And so they did a lot, most of their traveling, you know, either by foot or or on, on boats and ships. And so um, they got onto the boat and a, a windstorm came up. The windstorm came up and it, it rocked the boat and I, I just imagine again remember turbulence is a violent or unsteady movement of air or water so even there was turbulence on the boat and Jesus was sleeping on that boat and and the disciples got so afraid because of the turbulence that they had to go and they woke up Jesus they woke him up and said you know we, we he said you, you you're afraid why are you afraid and he said that Jesus then rebuked the storm he rebuked the storm so Jesus spoke a word and rebuked the storm and so in life in life, there's a lot of turbulence that we go through. There's different types of turbulence that we go through. And if I relate this back to the turbulence of a plane, there's certain intensities of turbulence, right? So when you're on that plane, you got sometimes where it just kind of shakes a little bit and then it, everything smooths back out. And that's considered light turbulence. It's a momentarily um, um, it momentarily causes slight 
changes in altitude or attitude with a slight bumpiness. So have you ever experienced just maybe a little bit of light turbulence? You know, light turbulence is something like, you know, um, um, something real simple that you can get through. Maybe you might have a little slight cold or you might have some allergies. It's, it's just a little slight bumpiness, a little slight turbulence. You know, you know you're going to get over it. Um, maybe you got something in a, a bill in the mail and now you got to pay an extra bill, but guess what? It's okay because you have the money in the bank, but it was just a little slight disruption. It was just a little bit of light turbulence. And then there's the moderate turbulence. There's a moderate turbulence. And this is similar to light turbulence, but it's somewhat a little bit more intense. So um, this is however you, you don't lose any control over the airplane, but but your the um, occupants of the plane they feel a strain um, against their seat belts, and so this might be maybe you get that same bill, but instead of you having the money to pay for it, maybe this time you you don't you don't have the money to pay for that bill. You know, maybe your diagnosis is a little bit more serious than just a slight cold. Maybe it's now turned into pneumonia, right? And so that's the moderate turbulence. And 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 so then we go into what's called the severe turbulence. Now we're talking about intensities because in life there's different intensities on our turbulence, right? And so now we go into severe turbulence and this um, causes a large and abrupt change in altitude or attitude. And it usually, um, and usually large variations are indicated by the airspeed and the airplane may momentarily be out of control. Have you ever felt like like you're so much turbulence is coming up where you just feel out of control. Like you don't have no control over the situation. Things come up in your life and, and, and you just don't have any control. And all you can do at that point in time is pray, pray and, and talk to the Lord and seek God during those times. And I even think about when I get on that plane and when that turbulence starts going, the first thing I do is grab my husband's hand and I said, we got to start praying. <laughs> <laughs> we got to start praying. And he looking at me like, girl, you know, but that's the serious thing. And so the thing about it is when I'm on that plane, the only person at that time that I have faith in is that pilot. I have to have faith that that pilot is totally trained, totally knows what they're doing, and they're going to get us through this the, the, the turbulence that we are facing. And that's just like God. When we're going through the situations in our life, when we're hitting that turbulence, whether it's light, whether it's moderate, or whether it's severe, it doesn't matter. We have to have faith in God. And that's where Hebrews 11 and 1 comes in. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So I can't see what's going on in front of me, especially when I'm taking that night flight. It's pitch black. It's dark. I can't see nothing. The only person who can see what's going on ahead of us is that pilot who's sitting on the front of the plane looking out. And that's just like our Heavenly Father. We don't know what's going on. We don't know how we're going to fix this situation. But God, he knows. He sees all things. Remember, our thoughts, our, our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. But he knows exactly what's coming. He knows exactly what we're about to go through. And so we have to have faith in God that we're going to get through our turbulent seasons. We're going to get through our turbulent times. And so then there's even um, one more um, intensity. And the last intensity is extreme turbulence. My God, extreme turbulence. And that's where the airplane is tossed violently about and it's impossible to control. It's impossible to control. And it may even cause some structural damage. And so have you ever been through something so extreme that it actually caused some structural damage? Have you ever maybe lost your home, got a car repo? Maybe your husband came and said, you know, he wanted to divorce. And so you had to go through a divorce or maybe, you know, your kids went through something and you just, you, you lost, it was impossible to regain control. And, and, but eventually 
nine times out of 10, that pilot is going to regain control of that airplane. It wasn't fun. It wasn't nice. We got shook up. We got tossed to and fro. But guess what? Eventually, that control was regained. My God. And so I want to let you know on this morning, if you're going through some extreme turbulence, and some of you might be going through light or moderate or severe, but there's some of you on this call today that's going through some extreme turbulence. You Basically, it feels as though it feels as though it's impossible to regain control. I want you to know that you're going to have to make Jesus your pilot on this morning. This morning, he is able to just rebuke the turbulence that's going on in your life and calm the seas. He will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding this morning for you as you're going through your turbulence. My God, my God. And there's other little types of variations of turbulence and 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 when you're on an airplane and and sometimes um, this called convection currents. There's convection currents that come up and they might cause a little bumpiness experienced by the pilots and because they're flying at a low altitude. And so have you ever been on that plane before and the pilot says, we got to go up just a little bit higher. We got to move up a little bit higher because if we go up a little bit higher, there's a smoother uh, 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 road, there's a smoother uh, flight that can happen if we go up a little bit higher above the clouds. And that's what the the Lord is telling you to do on today is you got to go up just a little bit higher. You got to move up in Christ just a little bit higher. You can't keep flying below your potential. Stop trying to fly below your potential and you trying to just take, go, go the easy way. You don't want to step up your game. You don't want to step up your reading. You don't want to step up your prayer life. You don't want to step up your fasting life. You just want to stay low and lay low, but you can't keep flying under the radar. God says, uh-uh, I need to bring you above the clouds. I need to bring you up here. I need you to bring you up to the top to where you can have a smoother flight. My God. And the only way we'll know that we need to be brought up a little bit more to fly at a higher altitude as if we go through a little bit of turbulence. See, if we don't go through nothing, he can't bring us up. See, that's, that plane, if it's not going through a little bit of turbulence, it don't need to go up to a higher altitude for a smoother flight. But see, God will allow things to happen in our life because he needs us to get closer to him. He needs us to, to, to connect with him a little bit more and we got to go to the next level in Christ. My God, my God. Mm. And so there's even times, you know, when you get on that air on that airplane and before you get ready to take off, the flight attendants come and, and the flight attendants give you all these different directions and instructions. And, you know, once you've been on the plane the first time, you don't even start, you don't even listen to it no more. But sometimes the flight, when, it, when the flight attendant gets up, they tell you that, you know, in, in case that the, the air pressure in the cabin starts to, to get a little low and you feel like you can't breathe, that an oxygen mask will come down from the ceiling. And it tells you, the, 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 the attendant will tell you that you need to put on your oxygen first before you give it to your children or give it to somebody else. And that's what I want to tell you this morning is that you can't help nobody if you can't breathe yourself. You can't help anybody if you in a, in a state to where you can't even uh, uh, have control over yourself. So you got to make sure that your oxygen is on first. You got to make sure that you're prayed up first. You got to make sure that you're following in the footsteps of Christ first before you can help anybody else. So you got to take care of yourself first. And so... Even in even the, the, the flight attendant will tell you that in the back of your seat, you will have the information manual about the plane, and it'll have all the emergency stuff in that information manual, and it'll have the, the plane type and, and how the uh, what type of plane it is and how many passengers it holds. So it gives you a lot of information about the plane. But how many times do you ever pick up that little pamphlet in the back of the seat? That, that right that's right in front of you. How many times do you actually pick up that pamphlet in the back of your seat and you read that pamphlet? And basically never, right? You you hardly ever because you're just trusting in what the flight attendant is telling you. But I want to encourage you on today that you got to pick up your pamphlet for life. And that pamphlet is the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions 
before leaving earth. I heard once before, you got to pick up your Bible and you have to read the, through your Bible. You have to read your instructions. You have to read what life is all about. You got to read of how you can get through situations, how you can get through those emergency situations, how God can, 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 can come in and save you and how he can, how God can come in and he can rescue you, how he can give you a peace, how you have to trust God, how you have to have faith in God. Just how we read our pamphlet that's in the back of that seat to know what to do in an emergency, we got to pick up our Bible and we have to read and we have to understand what we have to do in an emergency when the tur when the turbulence comes, when the storms arise, when things happen in our life, we got to pick up that Bible and we got to read that Bible. My God, my God. And so in Zechariah, I think it's Zechariah 10 and 11, it says the Lord will cross the sea of storms and will calm its turbulence. And we've seen it so many times, you know, we've seen it so many times where God calmed the, 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 the ships and he calmed the boats and he, he did these different things when turbulence came up. And just like God did it then, God can do it now. He can do it for you now. And there's no reason why he can't, but you have to have faith in God. You have to have trust in God. God will give you back the control. He will give you back the control. The control is not impossible, but the control is through him. It's through him. And even though we have these transition in our lives and, and the transition is the turbulence that's in our lives, you know, um, 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 we, we, we seek God and, and, and we know that God is going to be there for, for us and, and we get to our final destination. And even though we went through a little bit of turbulence, we went through a little bit of stuff on that airplane, we still get to our final destination. Thank you, Jesus. And so there's a promise that God has given you. There's something that he has told you to do. There's something that you're expecting from God. And even though you might get a little turbulence, even though it might not look good now, or the circumstance might not be what you want it to be right now, you're still going to get to your final destination. He's still going to bring you, he's still going to land you right there on the ground at your final destination. And even when we get to that final final destination there. I mean, I rode a plane so many times and you know, the, 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 the even though I say I'm not going to ever ride a plane again, guess what? I get right back on it again. Even though I'm a little scared, I'm a little uneasy. I don't know what's going to happen. Guess what? I get right back on it again. And that's just like the promises of God. He will continue to give you promises. He will t continue to tell you, do this, do that. You're going to write the book. You're going to start the ministry. You're going to go back to school. You're going to do all these different things. And it might be uneasy, you know, because you got out of one thing and you, you land it safely, but now you got to go back onto that plane again and go right back up into that air. And you know that there could be a possibility that you're going to hit some turbulence, but it's all good because he got me through the last destination. He's going to get me to this next destination. I, I made it to that destination. So now I know God is going to get me to this next destination and he's going to continue to keep getting me destin to destination after destination after destination. My God, thank you, Jesus. And so it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter. God is going to get you there. It's going to be some turbulence. It's all good. It might be some light turbulence, some severe, some moderate, or even some extreme turbulence. But God is going to get you to your final destination. My God, thank you, Jesus. And I just, I even think about some, some people in the Bible like Joseph. You know, Joseph went through a lot, but he got to his final destination. David went through a lot. He knew he was going to be king, but he had to go through some stuff. He almost got killed. And that's some extreme turbulence, if you ask me, running away from somebody who trying to kill me, right? But guess what? He got to his final destination of being king. Moses got to his final destination, even though he didn't cross over, but he still got to a certain point of where God brought him up to. And so there's so many people in the Bible that got to their final destination, but they didn't get there without any turbulence. And so I want to tell you on this morning that you're going to get to your final destination. You're going to make it, boo. You're going to make it. You're going to get there. You're going to go through some turbulence. But I thank God that we know that we're going to be able to stand at our final destination. Thank you, God. So I hope this word was encouraging for you this morning. As you go throughout your week this week, just know that even if just a little bit of light turbulence comes up, it's all good. It's all good. We have faith in God and we're going to know that he's going to get us to our final destination. My God, let us pray.
Dear most gracious Father, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for being God, God above everything and everyone, God. We thank you for being the King of kings, the Lord of lords, God. We thank you for your trust, God. We thank you for faith, God. We thank you for just everything that you have given us for peace, for joy, Lord, for all of the fruits of the spirit that you have given us, Lord God. Lord, we ask right now that even on this week or even in life, Lord God, even this month, whenever we're going through some turbulence, God, we just thank you for holding us, God. We thank you for keeping us, God. We thank you for just giving us the trust and the faith to know that you're going to bring us to our final destination, Lord God. Though we ask that you just continue to equip us with what we need as we're going through, Lord God. It don't feel good, Lord God. We get scared because our flesh, you know, our flesh comes out and we get doubtful and and, and we, we, we don't know what we're going to do or what we're going to say. But God, we know that you're going to take care of us, oh God. You told us that we're going to look to the hills from what's coming with our help, and our help's going to come from you, God. And we're holding on to that, Lord God. We're holding on to your unchanged, your, your unwavering word, Lord God, that, you, that your word is going to go out and it will not come back to us void, Lord God. And we know that you're going to get us there at the end, Lord God. And we thank you for that right now. God, I thank you and I praise you for each and every family represented on this call on today, Lord God. Cover each one of them as they go throughout this week, Lord God. Lord, cover them as they're they're traveling to and fro their from their destinations, oh God. Bring their families back together at the end of each day, Lord God. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. And we count it done right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for getting on this morning. And we will see you back on this call tomorrow morning at 530. God bless.